nerds, welcome to the post credit snack, your 15-minute bite-sized snack episodes of the post credit show. I'm your host, Loosh. It's my boy, Lockie. How are you, bro? I'm very good, my friend. Very good. Good, good, hey. good. What are we talking about today? Well, you came up with an absolute banger. Bangers. Bangers. Bangers, no mash. Director's Hall of Fame. Personal yes. Personal choice. Top three. Yeah. So the idea behind this episode, we want to have a look because there are so many good movies. Like there's a hist, there's generations yep. of epics that have been made, not just now, but like 20 years ago, 30, 40, 50, 60 years ago. And a lot of these, these movies have changed the course of history. I agree. So I what agree. I wanted to do was create a hypothetical Hall of Fame with six spots. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And each of us get to nominate three directors. Do you want to take it away with your first one? Peter... Jackson. Oof. Two words, simple name, but what an athlete. What, what an a, athlete. What a <laughs> what a brilliant human being. Mate, I tell you what, oh, and see, he's just next door too, over in New Zealand. Oh, sure, bro. Uh, ciao, bro. <laughs> <laughs> no, but in all seriousness, just a just a just a an amazing uh director, creator. His brain is something I wish I could just be inside. What's what's some of your favorite Jackson movies? <laughs> I'm gonna go with obviously the three, the big three to yep. start with. Uh Lord of the Rings, The Fellowship of the Ring. Absolute banger. The two towers yep. to follow suit. And then Return of the King. Which I actually think Return of the King was the best one. That's my personal opinion. You're allowed to be wrong. Yep. But you know. I'm going with uh, the Fellowship of the Ring. Like I said. Yep. Um, I would agree with you, but then we'd both be wrong. So I know he hasn't done a lot of movies, <laughs> but what he's done. For me personally, it's just brilliant and it's just blown my mind and it gets better. Every single time I rewatch the Lord of the Rings trilogy, it's just better and it's aging perfect. It's aging um, effortless, effortless, sorry. Effort effortlessly. Yep. Even I'm struggling with yeah, that word. That was <laughs> <a> <laughs> <laughs> um, but but you, you've, you've got to go back in time and realize that there was no CGI part of that movie. Yeah, yeah. It was all, it was all makeup. You'll never see that again. District 9 was one of my favorites. Oh. Good that way. was yeah, that that was yeah, a movie yeah, that was yeah. made to prove that a certain style of movie could work, and yep. my god, did it work! It certainly did. And then uh, he also came out with King Kong in two thousand and five. Yeah. Now that that um, that was the birth of the the Kong that we've now fallen in love with as a part of the MonsterVerse. So. Perfect movie yep. for me. Yep. Perfect movie. And then the Hobbit. We've got the Hobbit trilogy to follow. Yeah. That uh, yeah. that follows suit there as well. So Peter Jackson for me, um, beautiful, absolute love genius. It. He's my first. My first. Yep. And people are going to be like, wait, really? He's your first? Mm hmm. Tim Burton. Oh, yeah. Of course. Batman. Tim Burton. Batman, Batman <laughs> Returns. Yep. Yep. You know, yep. 96, 97, best movies ever made. Um, then you've got, you've got a couple of weird ones in there, like Dark Shadows with Johnny Depp, which I thought was just so stupid it was hilarious i am a vampire madam <laughs> um mars attacks which was the yes. dumbest movie ever made yeah but it just it, it's it's just kind of entered into the cult, the pop culture zeitgeist like it's just so stupid yep. and it's so funny and it's so tim burton yeah but then you've got some real good ones you've got things like um edward scissorhands amazing uh sweeney todd Oh, the barber. Oh, the demon barber of Beast Street. That's, That's right. Um, Fleet Street. I yes. love that movie. I yes. love that. And Johnny Depp, Helen Bonham Carter, amazing in that film was, together. Is that where there was like a there was like a, a secret door in the chair? Yep. Yep, yeah. Yep, wow. Yep, yep. <laughs> then you've got Beetlejuice. Don't say it again. Beetlejuice, oh, be Beetlejuice. Oh, oh. No, that's that's two separate Beetlejuice no, movies. That was three. <laughs> then you've also got the Corpse Bride. Yep. Sleepy Hollow. And The Nightmare Before Christmas, yeah. the best Christmas movie ever made. Yeah. Fight me if you don't agree. Yeah, so my number one, my 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 first induction into the uh, directors, movie directors Hall of Fame yep. for me is Mr. Tim Burton. Who's your second? He's a fair shout, that fella. Mate, yeah, he's man. bloody good. There were so many more movies you didn't mention that I was actually waiting for. Absolutely, like, he, there is. His, his list is just endless. Yep. Um, I'm going to go with a bit of a left field one here. Tell me. Uh, Quentin Tarantino. 
Oh, for me, just a game changer. Yeah. But also, he, like, isn't he the, the director that likes to show up in his own movies for little cameos here and there as well? <laughs> he certainly does. From Dusk Till Dawn was well, one of my that favorites. Was, uh, he insisted on sucking on Salma Hayek's toes during that <laughs> film. <laughs> of so, course he did. So. What a weirdo. I just hope that in 20 years' time we don't get some weird stories about how he made people feel uncomfortable on set, a la Russell Brand. Uh, we probably will. Um, probably. <laughs> so, but he also, so yeah, Reservoir Dogs. Yeah, I'm gonna, fantastic I'm just going to jump through this list here. Reservoir Dogs. Yeah. Pulp Fiction. Yeah. Game Changer. Best movie ever made. Game Changer. Uh, Jackie Brown. Yes. Love Another Jackie Brown. Another like a yep. fun kind of what's going to happen next. Uh, it was weird. It was very weird. But then again, so is everything Quentin Samuel does. Samuel Jackson once again just <sighs> rose above and beyond. I actually think that we can credit Quentin Tarantino for the rise and rise oh, of Samuel that's Jackson. That's a bloody good shout. That is a good shout. Think about the the rise that he had as an actor, yep. and compare it to the rise of Quentin Tarantino and his style of movies. And yeah. I'm I'm predicting that you're going to see a very similar rise. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. yeah, there you go. Uh, Kill Bill, Kill Bill One, brilliant movie. Uh, sorry, Kill Bill One and Kill Bill Two, brilliant couple of movies. In- I still want to see three. It's gonna come. I hope so. It's gonna happen. Because if it doesn't. It needs to happen. It would just be, yeah. I agree. Okay. It, there's a wasted storyline there because there's a def, there's definite potential yep. to smash out a third and yep. then finish it on a high because it's it's un it's it, it is it's unfinished. It needs it needs to it needs to wrap up. It's odd. Like we're so used to seeing trilogies. We are. And then there was just like Kill Bill one, Kill Bill two, and it's like. But we all. But now Bill's dead. What what's next? And nothing ever came next. Yeah. Kill William Junior. Maybe. Kill Bill Junior. Yeah. Bill Junior. <laughs> Inglorious Bastards. Oh, the, the bear Come Jew. On. I love that movie. The old baseball bat tapping, yeah, it on, tapping it along the tunnel wall. Friggin' out. love that movie. Man, that was that was a game changer as that well. That was intense. Yep. That yep. was like there were moments in that movie that were hard to watch. Dude. But oh the that, start. Again, that movie made superstars. It did. It oh. certainly did. Yep. Um, and then straight after that, you've got in uh, Django Unchained. Oh my god, how good was uh, Jamie Foxx in that? Amazing. Oh, amazing. You know what? What a movie. Leonardo DiCaprio, that yep, scene where he yep. broke the glass and actually cut his hand yep. and he holds his hand up like this and squeezes on it so the blood... Just, dri- it's cinema. He just kept going. Now, you know, um, Will Smith was actually originally cast. Oh, thank God they didn't. Oh, I'm just about thank to say the same God. thing. I was going to say it with a different kind of tone, but... Praise him. There we go. <laughs> the Hateful Eight. I loved that movie. Yep, 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 yep. And then his last his last masterpiece was obviously Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. I don't know that I've actually seen that one yet. Oh, get onto that. Okay, yeah, I'm going to watch that. Sharon Tate, the murder of Sharon Tate. And what's what's next for him? So there's been rumors that he's coming. He's come out and said that basically he's got two more films left in him, and yep. then he's going to completely retire. Do we know what those films are? So rumor is Kill Bill Three is going to be one. Excellent. The next one, it's been confirmed. Whatever it's going to be in, Brad Pitt and Leonardo DiCaprio yeah. have both put their hands up and said we want to be in that. You better cast us basically do it you need we need to be in this film do it so he reckons he's got two more he's 61 years old so he's still wearing sort of young jeez he doesn't actually look that he old does he? he looks all right for but he also age. started quite late in his career. well he did yeah. i think from dust till dawn i think was 94 yeah maybe 93 um and that was his first movie so yeah. Yeah. um he obviously done a few That's things such behind a the scenes. Stupid, fantastic movie though. The from one? Dust Till Dawn. Oh yeah, that was just like, and that was that was they came out at the peak of Buffy era as well. It so like did. the way yeah, yeah. the way the vampires <laughs> looked in that was like, oh my god, is this a Buffy? Yeah. yeah, it was so good. George Clooney was in that. Do you remember? Yeah, yeah, yeah. he played Quentin's brother. Yeah. Yep. Good shout. Good shout. Where are we going now? My next one. I'm excited. Christopher Nolan. Oh, so he was actually on my list as well, but I crossed him off. Christopher Nolan. Now, let me talk to you about Christopher Nolan. Yep. We're not just talking about um, the Dark Knight trilogy. Obviously, the Dark Knight trilogy is what everyone lords Christopher. Like, I I think that was like the coming of age for Christopher Nolan. Yeah, definitely. But you have got mind-bending movies like Interstellar. Yep. Memento. Oh my! I, I am so glad that you gave that a shout because that's one of the most underrated oh, movies. It's brilliant, Guy Pearce, Aussie Aussie actor. Love Guy Pearce. Um, far out. What a absolute film. brilliant movie! I love that movie. Then you've got Tenet. Now that was with uh, Idris Elba, yes. wasn't it? And apparently it didn't do too well. But I, it was a spectacular. I haven't movie. actually seen it. Watch it. Is it that you, you get on that, and I'll get on the other one. Okay. Dunkirk. Wartime movie, Christopher Nolan. Yeah. Friggin' amazing. They played it from three points of view, didn't they? Land, yeah. air, and sea. Oh my God. I saw it. I 
just didn't like it. No? No, I just oh, felt it was a little I thought bit... It was, I thought it was brilliantly it, oh, made. Okay, so um, it was a great cinematic piece, but for me... When I watch war, I'm sorry, I'm just more basic. I like to see the the gun battles and the and whatnot. But I, I know great movie, great film, great filmography. If that's a, if that's cinematography, a cinematography, yep, 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 yep. <laughs> great filmography. <laughs> hey, we're all we're all uh, learning new words on today's show. How about these top three movies? My top three Christopher Nolan movies, and these are the three movies why he goes into my Hall of Fame. Yeah, what do you got? Oppenheimer, Inception, The Prestige. Yeah, I'm glad to go the prestige of shit out there, mate. <laughs> there it is. There it is. I finished watching Oppenheimer last week. Um, similar to Dunkirk. Amazing movie. Brilliant storyline. I think I think Oppenheimer is more politically it minded. Yeah, and I think uh, and I can understand why yeah. that you're not into that. There are certain people who can't really get into that sort of thing. I'm I'm a politics nerd. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. I loved that movie. Did Killian Murphy deserve an Oscar for that? Absolutely. 100%. And Absolutely. I, yep. I agree with that. Hold heartily agree. Um, yeah, don't get me wrong. Great movie. Just a little bit slow for me. And we've already spoken about The Prestige oh, uh, oh. a couple of episodes Mate, ago go, in, oh. our, in our flagship episode. Mate, but I'm going to watch that again. <laughs> Inception. I still, dreams within dreams within dreams. Oh, my I've watched God. that four times. It's a mind bend. I still can't figure out what, what's going on. But... How good is it though? It was a brilliant. Yeah, Tom Hardy really came of age in that Absolutely. film. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, that was probably one of my favorite roles that he's been in. My friend, who is your headliner? Who Ooh. is the biggest the big, director? Big cheese. going in your number one pick. The hot dog, the the head honcho, the man that sits on the throne. I have got Mr. Martin Scorsese. Oh, mic drop moment. Okay, here. Give me a list. Get ready. Get ready. Taxi driver. Yep. Brilliant. Raging Bull. Yep. Wow. Goodfellas. Loved it. Casino. Loved it. Cape Fear. I don't know that I ever saw that one. Get onto that. You're a bit of a horror nerd. Yep. This is the this is this is big. Okay. Uh Gangs in New York with Leonardo. Oh. So this is where the With Daniel Day Lewis. Correct. Sir. Oh my God, what a movie. So this is where the real hard on came for Leonardo with Martin Scorsese. This is when oh. he kind of went. Robert De Niro, um, you've, I'm going to move in another direction now. And so then he really focused on Leo. Gangs of New York, The Aviator. Yeah, fantastic. The Departed. Yeah, I love that. Shutter Island. Now the ending. That for, movie oh, oh. broke me. Bro, I still, to this day, I would have to say that ending is probably the most mind-blowing thing, maybe besides Inception yeah. or maybe The Prestige. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But Shutter Island, when I finally got to the end of that movie, I was just sitting there with my mouth on the floor going, what just happened then? Um, Wolf, uh, Wolf of Wall Street. Oh, spectacular. That was Margot Robbie's coming out show. He should have got, uh, got an Oscar for that. He should have. He should have. Like, um, Jonah Hill was amazing in that. Guess how much he got paid? Like 50, 50 grand or something? 60K. The yeah. base wage you can get only because he wanted to start He wanted to that. work with Martin Scorsese. But he was... It, I honestly put him on par with Leo for that performance. Yeah, man. Um, the Irishman, brilliant movie there as well. And Killers of the that, Flower The Moon. Irishman, that, that's the one that had uh, IDJ in it too, right? No. Mm. No, no, no. That had he went old school. Oh, he no, 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 no. Uh, the other movie, I'm, yep, Robert no, Downey no. Jr. He yeah, had, RDJ. That's what I said. Oh, sorry. I've, oh my God. I'm, I'm, no, no. Robert De Niro. Sorry, not RDJ. He had Robert De Niro, Al Pacino. Right. Um, he went old school. Back to the back to the glory days of the eighties. There, right. Okay. And then he had Killers of the Flower Moon, which I am yet to see. But yeah, I, I haven't seen that either. Um, so that's my that's my head on show, the big cheese. Finish us off. What do you got, man? My headliner. I'm, I'm, I don't know what this is going to be. This here. is a generational talent. You've named your two favorites from my from what I think. So this is this is news to me. This man bought you Ready Player One. Ah, uh, yep. Okay. The Terminal. Yep. Hook. Yep. Close Encounters of the Third Kind. Keep going. War of the Worlds. Keep going. Uh, Minority Report. Yep. Saving Private Ryan. Yep. <sighs> Keep going. Schindler's List. <laughs> yep. Jaws. E.T. Indiana Jones. Yep. Jurassic Park. We are talking about the, the legend, the, goat. the icon, the goat, the goat, the greatest director of our time, the one and only Stilvan Spiebe. That's uh, Stilvan Spiebe. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Steven <laughs> Stilvan Stilvan Stevensburg. <laughs> Welcome <laughs> to the show, my friend. Bloody hell. Steven Spielberg. What? Uh, and uh, producer for Star Wars. And producer for Star Wars. Did you mention Jurassic Park? I did. Thank God. I, I did. wasn't sure if I heard that then. <sighs> I got nothing, mate. Where do you go? He's, like, but he's got Jurassic more... Park, Indiana Jones, Jaws, Schindler's List, E.T. Like, they're five of the biggest movies ever made. Yeah. Schindler's List is probably my favorite. Yeah, man. Masterpiece. Horrible, um, horrible movie in terms of, the you know, what the movie was about. But the way it was made, far out, man. That... Wow. I've, I've used the phrase generational when I talk about him because you're talking about pe- close encounters of the third kind. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. My parents watched that. Yeah, there you go. And then Jurassic Park. That was you. I watched that. Yeah. And then now you've got things like the new Indiana Jones movie that's come out and you've got Hook and you've got Ready Player One. You've got Catch Me If You Can. Where teenagers oh. now are uh, watching. Like... We're talking yeah. three to four generations of absolute, in the words of Seamus and WWE, banger after banger <laughs> after banger. Mate, the man can do no wrong. He cannot do no wrong. So, ladies and gentlemen, there you have it. That is my top three. That is Lockie's top three. I've got Christopher Nolan, Tim Burton, Steven Spielberg, and Lockie has... Got Peter Jackson, Quentin Tarantino, and the man, the myth, the Martin Scorsese. Don't forget to like, follow, and subscribe to the post credit show. This is the post credit show snack. Let us know if you agree with our list. If you don't agree with our list, that's okay. You're allowed to be wrong. Bye-bye. Say hi to your mum for me. Deuces. Bye-bye. <laughs> hey.